Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. Well, this didn't age very well at all, now did it? Just a week ago, the white media, who was always right, by the way, was saying that Kyrie Irving would most likely be staying in Brooklyn. This was pathetic wishful thinking on their part. Look at this quote, I mean the one at the bottom. That other teams don't want Kyrie Irving because he's a polarizing figure for people around the league, quote-unquote. Well, actually, he's not. When they say people around the league, what that means is anti-black racists like Joe Tsai and these white racist sports reporters who think that their job is to attack black athletes and demonize black players. The actual athletes in the league, you know, the guys who generate the revenue that people actually pay money to see, they love Kyrie Irving. The fans certainly love him. About the only ones who don't are the anti-black racists who don't like black people in general, especially a black man who refuses to bow to their colossal idiocy. See, when these white corporations put a black man under contract, as they see it, the abuse and demonization, that's part of the deal. They give you millions of dollars and lots of white media exposure precisely so they can claim the rise and fall of fill-in-the-blank later on. It's a white media scripted narrative, one that Kyrie Irving refused to fall for. This is what Sports Illustrated was saying about Kyrie Irving just last week. Sports Illustrated, supposed to be in the know when it comes to sports, and they're the dumbest ones in the room. What this actually was was a plea for other teams not to take Kyrie Irving. The white media needed Kyrie to be stuck in Brooklyn so that, as they themselves put it, they could push the lie that nobody wants him because he's so polarizing. Never mind the fact that he wins, which is the only thing anyone actually cares about. They wanted to make it about something other than Kyrie's win-loss ratio, because if it's about that, then they can't push lies about anti-Semitic anything. Once they target a black man for destruction, they need everyone to abandon him, to run away from him, leave him isolated, make him a pariah. Instead, in this case, the opposite happened. League players from LeBron to the head of the Players' Union spoke up for him, as well as massive support from the public. The white media lynching of Kyrie Irving was canceled. So now the white media needs to spin a new narrative that the lynching failed, but now he's damaged goods because they said so. And if other teams want him, that means they failed to lynch him and other black players will be possibly emboldened to speak their minds. It sets a horrible precedent for the white media. Hence, lying pieces like this one saying that Kyrie will stay in Brooklyn because, well, both sides need each other. Well, that's a total lie. The headline ought to read how Joe Tsai's arrogance and stupidity alienated him from the league, his own players, and how he sabotaged his own franchise for nothing. If the white media was in the job of journalism and not attacking the black community by proxy, that's what all the headlines would read. Joe Tsai is an idiot. He's a failure as an NBA franchise owner. He needs Kyrie. Kyrie doesn't need him at all, which Kyrie said a few days later when he proved garbage media like Sports Illustrated dead wrong and successfully forced Tsai to let him leave Brooklyn. And just to make sure that there was no confusion about what happened and why, Kyrie said publicly exactly why he left, putting the blame squarely on management and nothing else. You know, the reporting and, and the journalism, um that was going to come out of why I left. I, I knew that was going to be speculation, um, you know, but for me personally, um, you know, just sitting in the seat today, I, I just know I want to be places where I'm celebrated uh, and not just tolerated or, or, or just, um, you know, kind of dealt with in a way that doesn't make me feel respected. Um, and there were times throughout this process when I was in Brooklyn where I felt very disrespected and my talent. I work extremely hard at what I do. No one ever talks about my work ethic, though. Everyone talks about what I'm doing off the floor. So um, I just want to change that narrative and write my own story and just continue to prepare in the gym. And now that I'm in Dallas, just focus on what I can control, like I said. And, um, you know, I'm always going to be close with those guys in Brooklyn, just like I'm close with the guys in Boston, just like I'm close to the guys in Cleveland. Um, you know, it is a team competitive sport, but we care about each other's families way more off the court. So um, I know those ex the relationships will extend off. Um, I'm just focused on preparing to win. And um, I just know I need healthy boundaries, especially in this entertainment business. There's a lot of disrespect that goes on with people's families, with their names, and I I'm just not with it. Uh, so it's not personal against any of those guys against in the front, front office. It's just what I'm willing to accept. Um, and I took a chance, and luckily and fortunately, the Dallas Mavericks picked me up. So it's just all what I can control.
I think we can all appreciate that Kyrie made it a point to say that he wasn't being respected and that's the reason why he left the Nets. He didn't blame it on the teammates, didn't blame it on the town. He blamed it on management. He's controlling the narrative now because he's got the stage to himself. Racist mouthpieces like Ari Emanuel can use their white media connections to carpet bomb the public with fraudulent hit pieces libeling and slandering Kyrie. But reality always has the last word. Kyrie bided his time. He waited until he racked up a bunch of games that he won, scored a ton of points, and was playing at an all-star level. And it was at that moment that he said, Now I want out. But what do you know? Seems revenge is indeed a dish best served cold. Kyrie maximized his value and cashed it in. Well played, Mr. Irving. Well played indeed. But notice that even with one of the most dominant, successful, and beloved NBA players in the game saying that he left Brooklyn because of management and giving them a tongue lashing on the way out the door, the white media is not saying a word about Joe Tsai and how his asinine failure of leadership led to this. Under any other circumstances, that's exactly what the story would be about. The Nets are a mid-level team at best, and since they've lost a number of their big players, they're far less than that now. They can't afford for something like this to happen, certainly not at this moment, but it has. And the white media can't say anything about Psy's catastrophic mismanagement and destroying his own franchise because the white media were the ones who pushed the lies that made him think that he could get away with it. They thought they could publicly flog a black man and that he just had to take it because they told themselves that they had made it where he couldn't go anywhere else. They bought into their own hype. So they're terrified to talk about Joe Psy now. To do that would require them to go against their own narrative. They would have to say that Psy suspended Kyrie, and now Kyrie's going to another team, and other teams, plural, wanted him. To admit that would be to admit that the white media and their racist lies backfired and didn't work, and that they don't have the power to destroy black athletes like they thought they did. They don't want that to be the narrative. Racist Brooklyn Nets owner throws away the star player in the middle of a successful season and afterwards sets himself up for an uninterrupted string of failures. The white media gassed up Joe Tsai's empty head with lies like Kyrie likely will stay in Brooklyn because they need each other. Kyrie does his talking on the court and he reaches far more people every single night than Ari Emanuel and his racist pals reach with all their white media outlets. Kyrie knows when he's on the court, he has the spotlight, and nobody can do hit pieces on him in the middle of a game, nothing that will speak louder than him winning. That's something the anti-black racists like Ari Emanuel were furious about. Emanuel doesn't make anything. He doesn't do anything. He's a parasite, a bloodsucker, living off the creativity, effort, and talent of other better people. Kyrie said he's not going to try to appease people who say negative things about him, nor should he. That was giving the white media two black eyes and the middle finger. He let them know he's not changing anything. Kyrie Irving did nothing wrong. He was in the right from the very beginning to the end. He didn't back down from standing up for himself. He doubled down. And somewhere, Stephen A. Smith is tearing his lips away from Dana White's behind and saying, You can't do that! I know what a marvelous basketball player he is. I'm talking about what he said. I did my job. I was selfless. Really? We were in fourth place. You know, I left the team in good hands, and then I made sure to get a hold of this quote. When they asked him about Kevin Durant, he said, there's water under the bridge now. I wish them well. I left them in fourth place. I did what I was supposed to do. Took care of my teammates. Was incredibly selfless. Do you think we are all... Do you think we are all on drugs? Well, I'm sure that Kyrie Irving's not on drugs, though given how he shrieks and screams, it sounds like Stephen A. Smith is high on something. Jacques Vaughn had a quote in his press conference after the trade uh, demand, and he talked about the responsibility that you have as a player or a coach in the NBA. That responsibility is to show up every day and do your job and be a great teammate and be reliable I'm not sure that Kyrie Irving takes that responsibility seriously. And notice how when ESPN's other commentators talking about responsibility, they talk about it for everyone in the organization, except for the guy who owns the franchise. No responsibility for Joe Psy. So apparently in ESPN's world, responsibility starts at the bottom and never touches the top. By the way, has anyone seen ESPN's ratings lately? 
This is a guy who did not get vaccinated, hurt his ball club, then did get vaccinated and was allowed to play. This is a guy who, after a 46-point blowout to the Celtics, leaves Durant and the rest of the team hanging. And nobody wants to hear from Irving. There is not a net fan in New York, the few that they are, who cares about Kyrie Irving. This is a goodbye and good riddance. He killed Cleveland. He killed the Celtics. He killed the Nets. He should just pipe down and go out there and guys on a new team and see if him and Doncic can figure out how to work it, uh, how to work together and maybe win a couple of playoff series as Stevie said he won one with the Nets in a three or four year period. He is poison and they will learn out in Dallas like they've learned out in Boston, like they've learned out in Cleveland and like I guarantee it. They've learned that in New York. They are so happy, every Net fan in this city, in New York City, that he is out of town. And when you are that good, and he is great, when you are that good, and the fan base in the tri-state area is having a party because you're the hell out of there, that's, that tells you all you need to know about Kyrie Irving. Now you got another screeching idiot on ESPN saying that Kyrie Irving was poison in Boston. He was poison in Philadelphia. Blah, 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 blah. Notice how you don't have anybody from Boston or Philadelphia or Brooklyn saying that he was poison. See the loud mouths over at ESPN. They can't give you any names of any NBA players who thought that Kyrie Irving is poison or who don't want to play with them. However, I can give you names of all of the big time, big name NBA players who stood by Kyrie Irving during the white media's attempted assassination of his character, the controversy. See, we can put names on the people who support Kyrie Irving, but the anonymous people, the so-called people in the league who he's polarized, notice how the white media can never give you any names. They just give you a whole bunch of vagaries. That's white media's classic tactic. The only time that they mention other people's opinions, alleged opinions, is if they agree with them. But notice that they can never back it up. They can never substantiate it. So Kyrie Irving's standing is just fine in the league. He's respected by other players. That's the reason why when he's going to Dallas, you don't see anybody saying, oh, you can cut me from the team or I'm leaving. You don't see any players going on Twitter throwing any shade or any leaked reports of any players who just don't want him there. Though this is Stephen Smith we're talking about, and nobody expects him to say anything intelligent. This is the same creep who said that he gets up every morning wondering how he can make his white media bosses more money, and then, kind of as an afterthought, he wonders how he can get some of it. He doesn't want to be master of his own destiny, and he has fear and contempt for anyone who does. So, of course, when Kyrie Irving humiliates Stephen Smith's white paymasters, of course Smith's going to lose what little mind he had. I'm still wondering when Stephen Smith is going to go crazy like this over the fact that Dana White is not only still a free man after he beat his wife in public, but he's also still ahead of the UFC. Dana White has suffered no penalties for his wife beating, and neither Stephen Smith nor the rest of ESPN has any screaming or yelling or vitriol for Brett Favre, who still has suffered no consequences after he stole tons of government money from the poor. Oh, and for the record, up until this last week, the Brooklyn Nets were on their way to being a number one seed because of Kyrie Irving. Now the only place the Nets are on their way to is the toilet. That fourth place they currently sit at, that's going to be the highest that they get. Not just this year, but in perpetuity. I'll bet you that Dallas is going to end the season in a far better position than the Brooklyn Nets. And on a side note, does anyone ever take sports advice from Stephen Smith? I'm just saying. Kyrie humiliated the white media. Their lies have backfired, and now they're trying to clean it up with slander and lies about the man. Well, Kyrie is setting the record straight, telling the white media and Joe Psy that they need him. He doesn't need them. These racist sports writers and commentators that you see, these are the dweebs who weren't smart enough, weren't hardworking enough, and weren't talented enough to make it in peewee football, much less college or pro. They weren't even tough enough to be water boys, so their consolation prize is to talk trash about their betters. They vent all of their anti-black vitriol behind the shield of, well, we're just talking about athletes. No, actually, they're talking about the black community in general. Joe Sy is proving to everyone that he doesn't belong in the NBA. Do you think the locker room in Brooklyn is glad to see Kyrie go, especially after the last couple of months of winning? The white media is not glad to see him go because as the Nets resume their free fall, they're not going to be able to blame Kyrie for that, though they'll certainly try.
Well, Joe Sy got a pat on the head from the white media, and now Kyrie's cutting his gonads off in front of the world. You know, for all the trashing of Kyrie Irving that the white media is trying to do, do you notice how none of them are sticking up for Joe Sy? Notice how that's not happening? They're trying to claim that Kyrie was a problem, and he was poison for the team, and good thing he's gone, but why isn't the white media praising Joe Sy? Where's all of their lauding him and saying what a brilliant move it was to get rid of that problem? Yeah, the white media will use their propaganda to get you to do something stupid against your own interest. But then when it blows up in your face and you realize, wait a minute, I still got to make it through the rest of this season and the rest of this career, that's when you realize that when you play the fool for white power, they just leave you swinging in the wind. Josiah let the white media convince him that attacking Kyrie Irving and defaming the man wasn't going to be a problem con contract renewal time because after all, they need each other. But little did the little inbred chump know that it wouldn't even get that far. The white media creates these bubbles by carpet bombing the public with lies. And if you're an anti-black racist, they'll encourage you to take refuge inside those bubbles. But reality always gets the last word. Absolutely nobody in the white media is saying that this was a brilliant trade. Nobody's saying, oh, what a wonderful thing to do. Got rid of a problem and picked up some great players. Nah, they're not saying that at all. Kyrie demanded out, and that little weasel Joe Sy had to do it. Kyrie Irving pulled rank on that punk. Oh, and you know who else the white sports media is desperately trying to avoid talking about? Kevin Durant. Because I wouldn't bet money on Kevin Durant hanging around in Brooklyn any longer if he can manage to get out too. White media reports, however, are that the Nets are determined that they're not going to let Durant go. Oh, I'll bet they don't want to, especially not after Kyrie's left. They don't have anyone else left now but Durant. Hell, Kyrie and Kevin were the Nets team. Durant was the last man standing, but now he's injured. So with 50% of the Nets' chance of getting to a championship gone, does anyone really see Kevin Durant getting the Nets a championship all by himself? Does anyone see him wanting to stay in Brooklyn or bend over backwards to help Joe Sy after the way that Sy treated his friend Kyrie Irving? The Nets were hell to make into contenders. It's been a struggle from the very beginning. Kevin and Kyrie have had to contend with a moron team owner who was too stupid to fire a coach that was holding them back, and now this. The Nets have gone from being true contenders back to being a team that isn't going anywhere. The Nets are being bled to death by the incompetence and mendacity of Joe Tsai, but the white media doesn't want that to be the narrative. So instead, they're desperately trying to push the line that things are going to stabilize now without Kyrie around, and that Kevin Durant, he wants to stay in Brooklyn, when the truth is Joe Tsai refuses to let Kevin Durant out of his contract, and he's been refusing for some time now. Five seconds of Googling shows that Kevin Durant already asked to be traded from the Nets five months ago. Does anyone seriously believe that he's any happier now after all the crap that Josiah has done? The Nets lost James Harden early last year, too, and apparently they traded him for Ben Simmons. Now, admittedly, I don't know much of anything about either of these two athletes, so I can't tell you whether that was a good trade or not. But I do know that I hadn't heard Ben Simmons' name at all before I began doing the background research for this morning's briefing. Has Ben Simmons been a factor at all for the Nets since he got to Brooklyn? We all know Kyrie and Kevin have been dominant together, but what, if anything, has Ben Simmons done for the team? Yet, that's who James Harden, someone whose name I actually recognize, was traded for. And why did James Harden leave? Among other things, his frustration with Steve Nash's coaching. As we all know, once Nash got dumped, Kyrie and Kevin went on a winning streak that's been going on for several weeks, so it's not hard to see that Harden was right. But why wasn't Nash dumped sooner? Because of a stupid team owner named Joe Sy. That's why. He's not concerned about the team winning, but he is concerned about bringing black athletes in for some abuse. And when Kevin Durant inevitably leaves, the white media narrative will be their predictable favorite lie about the ungrateful black athlete and how these black athletes are just so entitled. Of course, nobody's going to be looking at the team owner and saying, gee, isn't he the only common denominator in all of this? Every bad decision, every refusal to make the common sense right choice, all these things have happened because of Joe Tsai. He has hollowed out the nets and left them for dead. Now again, I'm not a sports fan, so you can take this as the word of an admittedly non-sports watcher, but as I understand it, Kyrie Irving is going to be a free agent come this summer. 
So the Lakers will have the ability to get him in a few months because from what I understand, that was where he had wanted to go. But of course, it was Joe Sy's choice of where to trade him to. So obviously, Joe Sy decided that out of spite, his last bit of idiocy would be, well, I'm not going to let you go to the Lakers. Last time LeBron won a championship, wasn't it with Kyrie on his team? So if LeBron has anything to say about it, you better believe they're going to be campaigning hard to get Kyrie on the team come this summer. All Joe Sy has done is to postpone the inevitable. Joe Sy could have been a winner. Instead, he's become a cautionary tale. He didn't want to be an NBA franchise owner. He wanted to be accepted by and be a hero to trash like Ari Emanuel and other professional anti-black racists. Joe Sy wanted to prove that he hated black people as much as these other anti-black bigots did. And now he looks like the fool that everyone already recognized him to be. He got a two-second pat on the head for doing white power's dirt for them. And now that he's predictably being punished by Kyrie Irving, the white media is not bigging him up anymore. Because they know how stupid it would sound, especially after the way Kyrie's been on a roll the last few months. It's more clear than ever to everyone that Kyrie's a winner. Kyrie is. Not Josiah. Josiah can't win anything for an NBA team, though his stupid decisions can certainly cost them everything. Kyrie managed to hold off a phony white controversy and to turn the Nets into a winning team that had people saying championship loudly. But who the hell is going to want to play for Josiah now? Who's going to want to give this impotent cross-eyed piece of garbage any effort? Certainly not Kevin Durant. Everyone's talking about Kyrie and his chances of being part of another winning team. Nobody's talking about what's going to happen to Brooklyn now because everybody already knows exactly what's going to happen. They won't be winning. It took both Kyrie and Kevin, two of the best players alive, to make the Nets into something other than a dumpster fire. With Kyrie gone, Kevin has no incentive to stay, and fans have no incentive to watch. That is, unless they're just the hardcore Brooklyn natives, and they watch the Nets out of habit rather than actual interest. Oh, and just for the record, while Stephen A. Smith and Mad Dog Dummy and the rest of the fools at ESPN and the rest of the white sports media were busy giving their predictions about how Kyrie's going to be poison for Dallas and they're going to figure that out soon enough... Well, last night, Kyrie had his debut game in Dallas. And they won, naturally, with Kyrie himself scoring 24 points. Even Luka Doncic had to salute the man. Yeah, that's what he was doing. Meanwhile, a couple of nights ago in the Nets' last game, they lost. The only poison in the NBA happens to be idiots like Joe Sy and morons like Stephen A. Smith, Mad Dog Dummy, and the rest of the fools in the white sports media. And somewhere, Kevin Durant is looking and going, must be nice. Irrelevant white sports personalities and bootlicks like Stephen A. Smith, they're the only ones who are quote-unquote glad to see Kyrie Irving go, but then again, these guys overdosed on the hopium a long time ago. That must be the drug that Stephen Smith was talking about. You see, it doesn't cost the white media anything if Joe Psy deep sixes the Nets. If he destroys that very team that he paid so much money to acquire the franchise to, the white media can make money chronicling the decline and demise of the Nets. And when that day inevitably comes, one of the things the white media is going to do is to mention their own phony controversy about Kyrie's Twitter tweets, but since Kyrie will be making moves in Dallas or in Los Angeles at that point, the story will instead be that Josiah himself was mired in one mess after another, keeping players who weren't producing, keeping a coach who was incompetent. They'll even blame Sai for the phony Kyrie Irving controversy by claiming that he just couldn't control his slaves, uh, I mean players. And then when Josai has to sell the team to a white man or some white consortium, the white media will celebrate him leaving the NBA. White power believes in taking both sides of the argument, but the one side they'll never take is the truth. So there's going to continue to be more of these empty white media stories speculating about who the big winner is from all of this. You'll have broadcast toilets like ESPN who have egg and puke all over their faces, and they're trying to make this humiliation for themselves seem like a win by saying that Kyrie is a problem and he wasn't worth it, etc. But the truth is, they thought they would end his career, and instead, he's better than he's ever been. They needed him to fail. They needed him to beg, but he refused. 
They needed his ability to get on with another team to be damaged, but it wasn't. They needed the public to hate him, but they don't. So all the white media can do is repeat the same old slander, just more of it. And as Kyrie continues to rise, they'll try to pretend that they didn't spout all those lies about him. So I'll go ahead and put the capstone on this little sports story for you. The big losers here are the white media, Ari Emanuel, and Joe Tsai. Kyrie Irving has options, and for him, the sky's the limit. But for these other fools, there's absolutely nowhere left to go but down. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Darlette Hall, Jacques Hargett, Afro Elite, Brian Ellis, and Leban Gurhan. Salute to them, and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.